it's our next video in our summer travel series and it's all about using travel to determine if you've met the one. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Jamie Doris, AKA Miss Congeniality. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. I believe having a fabulous life is all about making fabulous choices. And that's what most of the content here is gonna be all about. So if being fabulous is what you want for your life, you know what to do, go ahead and hit subscribe. So years ago, I had somebody tell me, they said, you know, Jamie, before you get married, you should take a road trip with that person. It'll give them a chance or give you a chance to get to see and get to know who they really are. At the time I laughed at the idea, but as the years have worn on, I've seen the wisdom of that statement more and more. I've taken many road trips and I've taken them with many people and I have to say, yes, there's a lot of information that you can gather about somebody by traveling on the road with them for one, two, even three weeks at a time. The thing is, Road trips are like real life, but condensed into a very small, revealing chunk of goodness. Unlike a date on Friday night that's perfectly planned and executed, that's taking you to all of your familiar restaurants with your familiar food, a road trip is like a crapshoot. Anything can happen, and <laughs> trust me, anything will happen. So if you are headed down the aisle soon, or maybe you're trying to figure out if the person you're with is the one, I would highly suggest taking a pre-wedding honeymoon. Let's go ahead and call it the getting to know one another for, we for real moon. <laughs> and trust me, you're gonna have a better idea of what you're really getting yourself into after that. So what exactly should you be looking for on this road trip? No problem. Your girl, Miss Congeniality, has compiled five signs of long-term compatibility for you to look for on the road. So check it out. Number one, I want you to pay attention to was getting out of the door easy or stressful? Travel takes us out of our daily routine and it makes us go into what I call our natural personality mode. Basically, the truth comes out. People who are lazy tend to show their laziness. People who are controlling tend to be more demanding. People who are selfish tend to only worry about themselves. People who are angry tend to be angrier. The first place that this is going to show up is when you and your sweetheart are trying like hell to get out the door. That's where you're gonna to start to see this. She's packed the entire closet and has had a hard time fitting into the car, right? He's running late and hasn't even stopped by the ATM to get some money in his wallet. She's perfectly packed and has the entire trip itinerary planned to the minute on her clipboard. He's at your house four hours early because he's worried to death about hitting the city at rush hour. Look, we all have a natural personality type and there's nothing wrong with any of these scenarios that I just said. As a fabulous person though, who's looking for your long-term relationship, your only concern is whether or not his or her natural personality jibes with yours. That's it. Sometimes opposite attract. We like somebody who's different than we are. Sometimes we're looking for somebody who's just like us. There's really no right answer to this. So for right now, for number one, you just keep, keep a mental note on how easy or how stressful it was to just get out of the house and into the car with your partner to start the trip. Number two. How do they react to boredom? So at this point, you are on the road. It's your first day or two of the, or probably what I would call your drive days, right? You're spending eight plus hours behind the wheel. Things are getting a little boring. The stereo may work or maybe it just went out on you, right? There's only so much talking you can do before you're itching to pull out your phone to entertain yourself. And then, oh shit, the Wi-Fi like isn't working anymore, right? You're out in the middle of nowhere. All you have to do to entertain yourself now is each other or the long road. See, life is, is not a steady series of highs like you see on social media. Real life is just like that old country road. There's long stretches of boring ass highway with nothing but boring ass landscape for as far as the eye can see. You want to see at this point how your partner reacts to that boredom. Do they 
have to have the radio going at all times? Do they talk incessantly? Do they want to eat constantly? Or do they sit for long hours without saying a word? I've met that person. Again, there's no right answer to this. What you're looking for is compatibility. It's hit. If he's a radio addict, does that work for you? Or do you find that completely annoying? And if she was reading a book silently for half the day and didn't even say a word to you, was that refreshing? Or did it feel disconnected and, dis and distant, you know? This is your life. It's not somebody else's. You don't need to show how understanding you can be with somebody else's natural personality. When choosing a long-term partner, it's so important important that you pick somebody who reacts to boredom the same way you do or at least in a way that works for you. Number three, how do they react to challenges? Oh, this is a biggie. So now you've been on the road for four days and the car is overheating or your hotel booked up or the weather is not cooperating or your tent has a rip in it. How does your partner react to these unforeseen circumstances? This is a very important question to ask yourself. Do they get mad and start yelling at you? Do they sit there and wait for you to fix it? Do they lay on the side of the road and start crying? Do they completely shut down and stop talking to you completely, blaming you indirectly for the mess? Or I guess that's called passive aggression. Like real life, road trips are full of spontaneous surprises. You might have planned to go to San, San Antonio tonight, but the crazy traffic, followed by the road work, followed by the flat tire, caused delay. Now you're both hot and tired and hungry and looking for that first vacancy sign you see. Looks like you're skipping the Alamo. This is when you look to see if your partner is really your partner. Are they reaching up to do whatever they can to help the situation with as good of an attitude as possible? Or are they taking this bad situation and making it worse? Are they overreacting? Are they becoming emotional? Are they making it all about themselves? Are they getting drunk and letting you take care of it all? You need to take note of this and ask yourself if you want to face the real challenges of life with this person. Because that's who, that's who this person is. Number four, do you enjoy doing the same things? Now you're finally in Santa, Santa Fe and you're really digging the turquoise jewelry, you're seeing it everywhere and you're dying to get out and do some shopping. How does your partner react? Is he into shopping? Is he interested in seeing the museums and touring the winery like you? Or is he rolling his eyes and telling you that shopping is stupid because he'd rather go skydiving? You know, like real life, a road trip gives you ample opportunity to fill your downtime with whatever floats your boat. Some people love water sports. Others are really into hiking. Some people love shopping. Others wanna eat their way through the whole town, right? This is the opportunity you have to see how your partner most enjoys life. There's not a right answer here, you know, and your partner doesn't have to like everything you like. Just take note of how alike you are or aren't and how open-minded each of you are willing to be with each other. See, my husband and I, I would have to admit, are, are very different. We don't like all the same things. I love checking out downtown and learning about history, drinking coffee. He loves fishing, so he's always checking out the fishing scene. But he and I are very agreeable people who are flexible and willing to try new things together. So when we travel, we, you know, naturally, we kind of balance out doing some things for him and some things for me. It just kind of happens naturally. Number five, how was the overall experience? When you pull up in the driveway and you start unpacking the car, are you filled with warm thoughts about all of the good times you share together on the road? Are you happy that you took this trip? Or are you so frazzled by the experience that you need some time to relax and unwind alone for a long period of time, like maybe a month or like maybe I'll never see you again? This is the ultimate question to ask yourself. Did you and your mate travel well together? If you had some different disagreements, you know, were they handled quickly or did they fester for days? Did you both do things that you wanted to do? Did you learn more about him or her? Did you fall more deeply in love? 
Traveling well together on a road trip says a lot about your ability to travel well together through life. And you know, you can have more confidence at the end of this to answer that long-term compatibility question and literally you can do it in two weeks. I truly believe that before you should ever marry someone or commit to a long-term relationship, you should take a nice long road trip together. The planning and execution, the boredom and the challenges and all the experiences will give you a chance to get to know not just who that person really is, but how well the two of you work together. And I don't know a better way to test long-term compatibility than that. I mean, other than being together long-term or long time. <laughs> I hope this show helped you think through some ideas for determining if you really are with the one by going on a road trip. I've done an entire series of videos about finding love and if you're with Mr. Right. So check those videos out right here. Remember, I believe having a fabulous life is all about making fabulous choices for yourself. So if being fabulous is about is what you want for your life, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I am Miss Congeniality. Happy traveling. Goodbye. Did you enjoy this episode of Miss Congeniality? If so, go ahead and roll on over to my website at misscon.tv and leave a comment there. You can also go ahead and sign up for my weekly newsletter. It is through that newsletter that you will have access to my free lipstick goddess video that I share only with my subscribers. So what are you waiting for?